I'd better not wake him. He told me he sat in prison for 15 years for manslaughter because some idiot woke him for something quite trivial. I don't know if it's true, but I am not going to test it. That soldier's bag of medication. If I think about his description of the effects of castor oil, it makes me feel a little more than just queasy. It seems to be a strategic map of the Tunguska region. The arrows look like the movement of troops, but I might also be wrong. The landscape around here all looks so miserable and dreary. It's difficult to say where we are. Two machine guns. Dried something. It could have been fruit once. An open bottle of orange juice. thought you couldn't tell if an egg was fresh or not just by looking at it. I have just changed my mind. The catering list for the week. Today is potato soup. Delicious. A three-month-old duty rota. There are the first scientists already. Maybe I can get some information here. However, I should not ask too directly about my father so that no one becomes suspicious. I have no idea what one can do with that thing. There are chemical formulae written on it. If I had paid a lot more attention at school, I still wouldn't understand them. Surely I can take one slice. Well, I'm sure that owner will be able to spare it. One of the samples that gets analyzed here. Hello. May I interrupt for a moment? Psst. Not so loud. Dr. Lesniak is working and is really concentrating. We really shouldn't disturb him. Plus, he's in a pretty bad mood. What happened? Why is the doctor in such a bad mood? He's under a lot of stress. We are working on a test series, and Professor Sidorkin wants results as quickly as possible. I understand. And this Professor Sidorkin gets very angry if he doesn't get results quick enough? Well, he's okay. But Dr. Lesniak is unbelievably ambitious and naturally tries to finish as soon as possible. And when the doctor is stressed out and doesn't have bread and jam, he can become quite unpleasant. Bread and jam? Yes, it sounds strange, I know. But he apparently needs it to reduce his stress. Other people beat the heck out of a sandbag. He eats bread and jam. Well, we all have our own ways and means to deal with difficult situations. And if he gets bread and jam, he gets a bit more sociable? Yes, it helps. Unfortunately, he accidentally dropped his glass jar on the train platform. And there's no jam here on the train. I've looked everywhere. I'll be on my way then. If I find any jam, I'll let you know. That would be great. Working with him when he is in such a bad mood is really not a pleasure. Yeah? Excuse the interruption. Can I speak to you for a moment? As long as Dr. Lesniak doesn't have a successful breakthrough in his experiments, no. But... The train can blow up for all I care. I don't want to be disturbed. It's really... No! The door is secured with a huge padlock.
in you go. I'm sure that will be delicious. Or not delicious. Doesn't matter what else I throw in, it's not going to get any better. Well, what do you know? I should really take part in a cooking competition. I've got something here for you. Perhaps it will help improve your mood. It's... this is for me? Yes. You do like bread and jam, don't you? I made it myself, just for you. I... thank you very, very much. Mmm. Very interesting. You said you made it yourself. Yes, very interesting. And very delicious. Thank you. I really needed it. I'm feeling much better already. I'm very happy that you enjoyed it. Has it helped your mood a little? Yes. I owe you one. I can never return the favor. Then I'll get back to you. Maybe sooner than you think. Anytime. Hello. Are the good mood and the ability to concentrate back in gear? Yep. I'm doing much better. I know that this obsession with bread and jam doesn't exactly speak well for a reputable scientist. It's just one of my quirks. I simply need it now and then. Yeah, it's okay. We all have our weaknesses. Also, when some have a huge screw loose. What exactly do you do here? We are studying the regenerative capabilities of certain plants. Sounds very interesting. How does that work? The study? Yes. <sighs> we'll both be old and gray by the time I've explained it. Please don't misunderstand me. I don't think you are stupid. But you can't explain it in five minutes. No, that's fine. You're probably right. Would it disturb you very much if I watched you working? I find all of that absolutely fascinating. I also promise not to ask too many stupid questions and not to interrupt. All right, but don't touch anything. And if you have any questions, I'm sure Alexei will be happy to explain it to you. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Are you the only scientist on board this train? No, not as far as I know. Apparently there are a few on board, but the compartments are separated from one another, and the doors are being guarded by soldiers. That's too bad. It would have been interesting to discuss research results among yourselves. Well, hopefully we'll have enough time for that later. You have no idea which of your other colleagues are on the train? No. The only person who has a complete list of the scientists and scientific researchers is Professor Sidorkin. I'll have to get my hands on this list. Then I'll know for sure if Dad is on the train or not, and exactly where I can find him. Who is the Sidorkin? Professor Sidorkin? He is my direct superior and the scientific director of the biologists. You don't know him? He's an absolute genius in his field. There's hardly anyone who knows more than he does in the field of molecular biology. Oh, that must have passed me by. Do you think I could talk with him for a moment? He's right next door. But if I were you, I wouldn't bother him right now. He's under a lot of stress and is extremely irritable. And when I say extremely irritable, I mean even more irritable than me when I have to go two weeks without bread and jam. Wow, that bad. Then I'll be careful. Why is he so irritable? There are a few problems, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. I have to go back to work now. You'll excuse me. If I promise not to stand in the way and not to ask too many stupid questions, can I have a look around? Sure, but don't touch anything. Phew, that was close. I have only just saved humanity from the terrible Dr. Jekyll. Oh, thank you very much. Working with them is now so much more relaxed. I owe you one. So if you have any questions, I unfortunately can't tell you everything. I hope you understand that. Of course. I'm happy that I can see your work at all. A soldier who interests herself for science, that's not a daily occurrence, is it? No, and certainly not someone as pretty as you. Oh, thank you. What you're doing here looks incredibly complicated. Really? It's actually quite simple. These plant samples were exposed to radiation that is very similar to the radiation in the Tunguska region. At first the doses were kept rather low, 
and were then continually increased. I expose the samples in that device over there to a flame with a constant temperature and see what remains from the plant. You burn plants? Yes, you could say that. We are trying to determine which dosage of radiation no longer leads to the complete deterioration of the cell structure. Wow, I even understood that. Well, I deliberately left out two-thirds of the explanations. Wonderful. Once in my life, I'm proud of my scientific abilities, and you blow the whole illusion apart. I'm sorry. What exactly will you be doing at our destination? You mean in the research station? Yes, exactly. There. Scientific assistants also seem to be easy to question on an international level. So, it has to do with the research station. Maybe I can squeeze an odd secret or two out of him. What exactly is your task at the station? Unfortunately, I can't tell you that. Otherwise, the station wouldn't be a secret. So, it's secret, is it? Very good. Come on, boy. Tell me more. Yes, I understand. But perhaps you can tell me something which isn't quite so secret. I have unfortunately little idea about biology and chemistry, but it certainly is fascinating, isn't it? I can only talk about what Dr. Lesniak and I are supposed to be doing there. Sure. A long time ago, they discovered that the plants in the region exhibit abnormal plant growth. It isn't a secret. It was all over the newspapers. Yes, of course. And now we are trying to influence this growth in a controlled manner. Fascinating. And what is the goal? Unfortunately, I can't say. But imagine if we could arbitrarily manipulate the growth of plants. That would solve the problem of world hunger in one fell swoop. Wow, that really does sound like a huge goal. Indeed. What I wanted to ask you was... Just a minute. If you can pester me with questions, then I can too. Oh, yes, of course. It's nothing personal. So, why have so many soldiers been brought into a prohibited zone? Prohibited zone? Yes, in the research station and everything. I mean, with the materials and all the people here, you could wage a small war. Yes, well, I'm not allowed to talk about that. You scientists have your instructions, and unfortunately, we have ours. Ah, uh, I understand. I willingly tell you everything about our experiments, and I have one little question and get an answer like that. I'm sorry. I would love to tell you everything I know, but that is very little anyway. It's nothing personal, but what I do know is top secret. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I'll be off then. Okay, see you later. If I switch on the light, the nice gentleman there may wake up. I'd better be very careful of him. Uh, which dumbass turned the light on? If I find out, I'll probably get another 15 years in the slammer. Oh well, he'll definitely calm down soon. At least, I hope he will. So, I've got the bottle of castor oil. His dirty books and his smelly underwear, I will very generously leave where it is. I think I can say in all confidence that this will be a devastating success. I have just realized that I haven't eaten for ages. I should be careful that I don't inadvertently bite into that. Not much water goes into the bottle, but it's better than nothing. Another bread and jam just for me. That's almost too much of a good thing. Thank you. Oh, I'm not feeling so well. I must have swallowed the jam and bread a little too quickly. Alexei, please continue working here and tell Sidorkin as soon as you have the right result. I've got to go somewhere. Fast. Very fast. A little liquid should be enough. 
it would look a little suspect if everything here were underwater. Damn, why did the fuses have to choose the blow now? I have to go replace the fuses. Could you watch to make sure no one touches anything? Sure, no problem. Thanks. I'll take very special care that nobody touches a thing in here, apart from my good self. I'll take the sample out of the glass. I'll take the sample out of the glass. What am I going to do with it? I'll just put one inside the other. I can't think of anything else spontaneously. So hopefully the fuse doesn't blow on me again right away. And in the meantime, I really doubt if I will ever get any surprising results here. What? That can't be! Really? The sample didn't burn up completely? You can see that with the naked eye! I don't even need to do an analysis! I have to tell Dr. Lesniak! And maybe even Professor Sidorkin! This could actually be the big breakthrough! And I had almost stopped believing it would ever happen! And you are absolutely sure that all the test conditions were controlled and complied with. I always took random samples and rechecked everything. And I would put my hand into the fire to confirm Alexei's competence. I've worked with him for many years now. So you performed the experiments. Did you notice anything different? What kind of difference? We have to check everything exactly. If the results are correct, it's a sensation. But if we register it as a sensation, and we've made a mistake, and the most we'll get afterward is a job in a natural history museum. So go through everything again slowly. We should look at the analysis together. I only hope that we didn't miss anything. If the result is really correct, we'll go down in history. The gentlemen are certainly very enthusiastic about their discovery. I should use this chance to have a look around Sidorkin's office. There won't be much time until this Sidorkin comes back. I'll have a look around his desk first. Maybe I'll find the passenger list at least. The drawer is secured with a very simple, but unfortunately, a very effective lock. It's huge! That's not normal. That must be genetically engineered. The piece of paper reads, Place all documents in the safe each time you leave the room. Signed, W-I-L. If this safe has the employee list in it, then I should have a better look around here. Maybe I can find out exactly what is going on in Tunguska, and what Daddy's got to do with it. Tunguska Project. Error analysis is written on these files. 2000 to 2003 at the top, and at the bottom it begins with 2004. There's not very much I can do with these in the time I have. Some kind of scientific report about molecular biology. It's nearly all formulae and those few words are just as incomprehensible. The documents are entitled Security Risks and Acute Threats to the Tunguska Project. I'll have a look at that, please. If I understand this correctly, in the last few years, several attacks have been carried out on official and secret research facilities. Documents were partly destroyed, but the culprits also do not seem to shy away from bomb attacks and arson either. Eyewitnesses report seeing men in black robes. It has not been possible for the authorities to capture any of the perpetrators. Then the Secret Service FSB was entrusted with this matter, but has not been able to produce any solid results in their investigations. The assumption that this is the work of political terrorists could not be confirmed that the attacks are being carried out by a religiously motivated sect is also being considered. I wonder if they are the same men in black robes that Eddie apparently saw and was babbling about. If all that's true, then Daddy has got bigger problems than I feared. I thought so. The little toad is a snoop. 
I noticed you in Moscow at the train station. Not in a good way. Toads. Remain toads. Even when they are wearing clothes. But don't worry. We're going to take care of you now. What is Kansky doing here in the middle of the night? Maybe I'm wrong, but I have a really bad feeling about him. I should definitely make sure he doesn't catch me. He probably hasn't forgotten the big bump on the back of his head yet. Finally, an answer to my question. I'm curious to see what my Irish colleague has found out. Hi, Max. It took a little while, but the information you wanted wasn't so easy to get. It was a good thing you sent me the original letter. But I'll tell you more later. For starters, let's talk about the Irish company and the letterhead. This company used to belong to a man named Ken Morangi, and had something to do with plant fertilizer. The company was suddenly closed down, even though business was going pretty good. I unfortunately couldn't find out anything more about it either. Since then, Morangi lives like a hermit on a small island on the coast of Ireland. I've attached a map along with the mail. But now to an even more interesting story. I took a closer look at the letter you sent me. It isn't as empty as it looks at first glance. It apparently uses some kind of invisible ink. Not very imaginative, but it's apparently sufficient enough for people like you. Here are the contents of the letter. I hope you can understand it. Hello, Vladimir. Receive the documents. Copy is underway. We still have to settle the question of the handover. Ken. P.S. The whiskey is still waiting. Wow, that sure does sound mysterious. Maybe this Morangi knows something that could help us. I'd better tell Nina. I wonder what she's doing right now. Hopefully she's doing okay. I'm really worried about her. Damn. It is not my day today. First I sit with a bowel-sick psychopath in a train compartment, and now with a rabid dog. I've got to get out of here again quickly. As soon as we reach the next bigger village, they want to hand me over to the authorities. That would be the end of my search, and probably the end of me. 